So once again, everyone, we appreciate you joining tonight. As you just noticed, this session will be recorded and um, this information will be posted on the coaches resource page for you guys under the winter games section. Um, but again, this is just a another heads up and in information sharing and gathering and, and working with you guys as the heads of delegation collectively to um, get through the games and make sure we've done everything we can collectively uh, to provide information, ask questions from both sides. Um, but tonight, um, my name is Steve Bennett. I think everyone knows me by now, but if not, um, Steve Bennett, uh, Senior Director of Competitions here at Special Olympics Maryland, and Mike Sarnowski, our Vice President of the Sports Department here. So with that said, we'll go ahead and get started. So this is the agenda we'll cover tonight. Again, welcome. So that's already taken care of. Um, we'll give you some updates and reminders. Again, uh, really concentrating on any changes and everything, knowing that we're going to a new venue um, from Whitetail moving to Wisp. Talk about the general overall schedule. Uh, go over some maps and layouts, uh, which some of that has changed since our site visit uh, this past weekend at Wisp. Um, talk about the head of delegation meetings, registration, uh, housing and food services, uh, for those alpine skiers, the uh, overnight storage that's provided at WISP for your ski equipment. Talk about the special events and the opening ceremony. Uh, reminders about coaching. We won't go into that a lot, but just a few uh, highlights there. And then talk a little bit about families and spectators. And then at the end, um, open it up to questions. Uh, we will be monitoring questions. If you could um, use the chat function, um, Mike and I, depending on who's presenting, We'll be um, checking those and answering them to best that we can. And at the end, if there's anything that we weren't able to answer, um, we will address at the end. Um, so we appreciate you staying on mute. And, if... and then one note also, folks, um, most of what we're giving here is for the overall games. We'll touch a little bit on the individual sports. But of course, we have the sports specific uh, coaches pre-competition webinars next week. Alpine on Monday and uh, snowshoeing on uh, Thursday, I believe. Uh, and uh, they'll go into much more detail on the specific sports and such. We're just giving you kind of the, for the for that stuff, we're giving you kind of the, uh, the top bar or the top line stuff. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Um, so uh, before we get started, I just want to once again um, thank everyone who was able to get up to Whitetail on the two training sessions for Alpine and then the one on the 11th for snowshoeing. Um, we really appreciate the partnership that continues with Whitetail um, and obviously, obviously our management team members um, who provide that training and then you as leaders and through your coaches, athletes and partners. Uh, we hope that everyone had a great experience there. Uh, we will be following up with uh, the area directors in regards to um, the counts for meals and lift tickets and all that at a later date. So just so everyone is aware there. But again, we really appreciate it. And we hope that you found it valuable um and good to to get on the snow um so some key changes here uh we wanted to highlight um the the biggest thing as i mentioned is we are at wisp so hopefully that's not news to anyone at this point um and the time trials are not a separate event as they have been in the past um so the time trials will start on sunday uh, for both sports and then finals will be on Monday and Tuesday. So it's basically um, what we consider a three-day event. Um, again, Sunday the 26th through the 28th on Tuesday with the conclusion of awards, et cetera. Um, we will be looking at doing some time trials, at least for Alpine, scheduled by area and county, and um, starting around two on that Sunday. And we have kind of a, an overview schedule that, that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and really hound in on that with the um, coaches webinar sessions as well. Uh, but basically the way they looked at doing that is the, from a geographical standpoint, those counties who are closest will be the earliest. And then those who are traveling a further distance will be later in the day for those time trials. Um, for the check-in again, um, as we mentioned previously, it'll be in the control center um, was where you can check in. Um, we're working on the lift tickets and uh, equipment rental forms, et cetera. We will be sending out the equipment rental forms to the coaches for Alpine tomorrow um, so that they have the weekend if they want to go ahead and uh, if they have any training sessions this weekend or whatever, getting together with their team, uh, they'll be able to start getting those filled out. Um, so those will be turned in um, upon getting your rental equipment. 
So, um, you know, we're looking at uh, that, that check-in again with the coaches packets and, and the heads of delegation packets in the lobby and then in the control center later in the day. Um, the opening ceremony will take place Sunday night at WISP in the McHenry Lodge. And we'll talk, we'll show you that on a map here in a little bit. The, the lift tickets um, for Alpine skiers, it's kind of one of those little scan cards. And Mike, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what RFID stands for. I believe it's radio frequency ID. Okay, so it's it's literally they walk through and they'll get scanned and that will give them access to walk through the gate to get on the ski lifts. Again, this will be uh, really heavily mentioned in the Alpine uh, pre-competition webinar with those coaches. Um, and there will be one of those scan cards right now. The plan is um, one scan card for Sunday and then a second scan card that will be utilized for both Monday and Tuesday. Uh, WISP is currently working on that right now. Um, and not to get into too much detail, but it'll be need to be on your left-hand side for those going up there and above the waist. A lot of people have this little uh, zipper pocket on the sleeve or whatever, but it's really important um, that they don't lose those passes or those uh, scan cards and that they have them appropriately on their body as they go up the lift. So just something uh, that we wanted to mention as well. Um, finals again, as we talked about, start Monday morning, um, around 9 30 for Alpine and around noon for snowshoeing. Um, and we also are looking to complete our event guide that will be uh, the link will be emailed to all delegation members, including athletes, partners, um, anybody who's registered in your delegation, no later than this coming Monday. So, a lot of good information in there. And again, it's just another thing that you can use as a reference, and it will also be posted on our coaches' resource page. So um, another piece of the updates, uh, the full registration, as we've talked about uh, with fees, um, the two nights of lodging, that's 195 per delegate. And the day of registration, that's ones who are not staying in the, in the overnight housing provided by Special Mix Maryland is 120 per delegate. Um, and that does include the meals as well. So it just doesn't include the overnight housing for those who are staying off site. Uh, we are look, uh, continuing to use the three to one ratio. And I think there may have been one or, or very, very few exceptions, not known necessarily to the three to one ratio, but um, some additional housing has opened up on site. So I know Mike and Jane have been working with the delegation members um, uh, to see what we can do to get everyone or as many people as possible in the hotel. The one thing here that we really want to stress to you guys and, and work with your coaches is um, we always know there's going to be scratches. Um, so the sooner, if you know scratches, the sooner, the better, because this coming Monday, after that date, everyone who is not scratched will be charged the full rates. And that's noon on Monday. So again, work with your coaches and your de delegation members to see if there's anyone who you know of. I know I received one email from two scratches. I can't remember which county program it was. Um, but, um, just know that after Monday at noon, you can still continue to scratch people, which helps out in the check-in process and everything else. But after that date and time, um, the rates of the invoices and bills uh, will continue to be applied. So uh, looking at the overall schedule, again, Sunday, uh, we talked about the, the delegation registration. That'll be in the control center in the Barnes room. That's where the control center will be, obviously in the lobby as well, um, as those of you are coming in. Uh, the snowshoeing uh, practice session, which is kind of on your own. There's not going to be really any any management there or, or personnel to check and help you out or whatever, but it will be open from 10 to 2 on Sunday, and that'll be in the snowshoeing venue area, which has changed from previously noted, and we'll show you that on the maps coming up. Um, volunteer registration, we're working on location for that. And then um, the alpine skiing time trials, again, based on uh, county programs, We'll begin around 1.30 and then hoping to wrap up around 5. And that'll be on the different various courses that we'll show you on the maps as well. Similar with snowshoeing, um, those uh, time trials will be from 2 to about 5, um, maybe a little bit uh, earlier than 5 as the conclusion of those time trials. The dinner, um, we're looking at doing shifts again, just because of the capacity in the McHenry house and, and making sure everybody um, gets in and gets out. So, Dinner will start on Sunday from 4.45 to 6.15. 
Um, big thing there, as we mentioned somewhere else in the in the webinar, you must have your credential. That is your meal ticket. And then also, once you sit and eat, please vacate your area, clean up after yourself so other people can come in um, as we start to look at the changeover for the um, opening ceremony. And Mike, I saw you unmuted. You yeah, uh, just as a note, so folks aren't confused. Um, so dinner will be in shifts, is planned to be in shifts on Sunday. Not necessarily any of the other meals uh, would be in shifts. The main reason is just historically, um, I guess because people are looking for something to do. Um, we have a huge line as soon as dinner opens up on Sunday. So by having it in shifts, that hopefully will minimize that line. The rest of the meals seem to kind of work themselves out, uh, given the number of folks that we have. So the shifts at this time are planned only for uh, for Sunday night's dinner. Yep. Good deal. Thank you for the clarification, Mike. Um, and then we are pleased to know, note that um, leading into the opening ceremony, there is a Garrett County Chamber of Commerce, a welcome back reception, if you will. That'll be in the McHenry Lodge from 7 to 7.30, leading right up to the opening ceremony, uh, which is 7.30 to 8.30 or 9. Um, all, of, all of that is in the McHenry Lodge, the main uh, hub, if you will, of Winter Games outside of the hotel. Um, we're looking at having the coaches meetings leading into Sunday's finals uh, for both sports in the Crawford and Morris rooms. And again, we'll talk with those coaches in more detail next week at their meetings. For you as an HOD, we are looking at having a meeting that evening on Sunday night, again, going into the finals in the next two days of competitions um, in the Pine Room at 930. Again, a little tentative, but that's what we need to plan on for at this time. The Pine Room is located in this on the second floor in the uh, hotel portion, if you will, uh, not over near the McHenry room, but the second floor, you can take the elevator right up or stairs as you desire. And if I can find my cursor, I will go to the next slide. Um, moving into Monday, the first day of finals, I'm not gonna go through all of this um, as you'll have this to, to look at at your um, convenience. But again, just a reminder, all meals are in the McHenry Lodge. Um, the control centers in the barn rooms, that's where we're, if you want to stop in in the morning, we'll have some competition schedules and things of that nature ready for, for you as HODs, et cetera. Um, the one thing I do want to mention is previously we had indicated that there would be a family reception. The family reception is no longer in place. However, we are having a family hospitality area only on Monday. And that's kind of a meet and greet. Hey, how are you? Hang out for a little bit. And just for families who are pretty much non-delegation members, if you will, kind of um, just chit chat and have some have some space and time to themselves if they wish to do so. Um, tentatively, that's scheduled from 10 to 3.30. And we're looking at the exact location for that. But, um, you know, we will let you know. And um, we'll also look at doing uh, some merchandise sales, possibly in the family hospitality um, but then also uh, during the dance as well that evening on Monday. So you see the competition, you see the lunches, you see the coaches meetings. Um, again, the athlete dance will start after dinner. Really important there is that, again, get in, get your dinner, get out, um, clean up after yourselves. There'll be a little bit of a changeover in the room on Monday, make a little bit of room for the dance. And similarly, on Sunday, going to an opening ceremony, there'll be a major flip of the room. So really appreciate your cooperation and your other delegation members, too. Um, not necessarily assist. They're more than welcome to assist if they if they wish um, to help turn the room over, move some tables and chairs. But really um, just to get in and get out so that we can pre be prepared for the rest of the evening act evenings activities. Um, as a reminder, this the athlete dance, the theme is, oh, I'm going to get it wrong, Academy Awards. I think it is. Um, so, um, you know, I think it's your favorite movie character, your glitz and glamour, whatever you want to do is fine. Uh, just come ready to, to go. We are looking at having a, um, a room within the McHenry Lodge where the dance is off in the back corner area that will be a room for athletes who are overstimulated or um, need a place to go uh, sit with a little bit of a quieter area. Uh, we're looking at having some board games and stuff like that in the whispers room in the back corner. Um, and then for you as HODs, we'll have another meeting uh, with you guys on Monday night to prepare for Tuesday checkouts, the final day of competition and finals and uh, wrap up the, the winter games. 
Tuesday. Again, same same thing here. You'll see the times and everything else. So um, again, with the if you're looking for the exact times and everything of each race and snowshoeing or the different levels in Alpine, that will be covered in those uh, sports specific webinars coming up. So time trials information, um, again, oh, I was just looking, this is not where I turned it over to you just quite yet, Mike. Um, so athletes and partners have been registered. Hopefully everybody has been registered in their events and their time trials events that uh, they should be preparing for to compete at winter games. Um, we'll work with the coaches and everything if there are any um, changes or adaptations to those events during the time trials, but the coaches know how to um, turn in any information and what's required of them in order to have that opportunity to tweak an event or tweak a level. Um, and um, But the important thing is, just so you guys know as heads of delegation, if there is any tweaking of the events or levels that those athletes or partners have to have competed in those exact same time trials for those given events, okay? And it talks about here where those changes happen, but those will come um from the from the head coaches here's kind of the tentative plan there for the alpine time trials as we talked about for the closest counties and, and the schedule there so um the, the alpine crew is reviewing this right now and confirming so again uh, a little bit tentative here but this is the plan for now you can see the different counties and what times um they would be coming the one note um for this is for anybody who has individuals which there's not a lot of athletes in it but for the time trials for the glide and super glide those will occur on monday and the finals for the glide and super glide will be on tuesday so just want to make that clarification as noted there in the bottom right hand of the grid so again this is tentative um we will give more details as the alpine crew reviews this and present that to the coaches next next week in their pre-comp webinar I wanted to give you an idea of kind of what we're looking for from a time frame there. And similarly here with snowshoeing, this one is not necessarily based on geographical location. It's based more on uh, the events. So I uh, just want to make note of that as well. You're not going to go through everything here. You can review the schedule at your leisure. And again, the coaches will be provided that information um, in more detail. And next week so nothing's changed on this map as far as coming up 70 for most people hitting 68 coming and then coming down uh, 219 to head into deep creek and McHenry and get to wisp location so not going to spend any time on this map this is the one that i will spend a little bit more time on so previously we had talked about snowshoeing being over in this general area Upon our site visit this past weekend, we have moved snowshoeing over to this area, okay? This is the McHenry Lodge, right? Yeah, this is the McHenry Lodge. This uh, is actually a little further over to the left, right where that arrow is pointing. Yeah. yeah. So this is, I mean, this is the main hotel. This is the McHenry Lodge and all of this. This building over here is a maintenance workshop area for the, the crew at the mountain. So this is the big A-frame window looking up to the slopes. So it's there's a deck off of your side here. Oops, sorry. There's a deck off to the side of the McHenry Lodge. And that's where we'll have some pre-staging and stuff like that for snowshoeing. And then it's a very short walk right out to the snowshoeing tent for final staging and getting on to the course. Uh, WISP is similar to what Whitetail has done in the past. WISP has been stockpiling snow and we'll be moving snow down to this area um, for the snowshoeing competition. So um, pretty excited about the location of that. Um, it lends itself to many things um, from an ease and a walking distance, etc. So Nothing else has changed really on this other than the fact um, that awards for both snowshoeing and alpine will be right inside the McKinney. Steve, lot. Yep. There's another slide that has the map of the hotel. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I forgot about that. So, yeah, these are the courses that we're anticipating for alpine, et cetera. So, again, uh, very basic 
uh, map here. Just wanted to give you guys an idea of what to expect on site. So yeah, this is what uh, the close-up version. This is the A-frame window I was talking about. Snowshoeing uh, deck is over here and here, and they'll come right down this area, walk straight out, and right over here is the, the competition. Okay, But this is where the awards will be. <clears throat> so both snowshoeing and alpine will be coming into the same area. We'll have two separate award stands. Um, it won't necessarily be one for snowshoeing, one for alpine. The awards team will be working as the athletes and partners come in from their events. Uh, they'll just take them as they come. So, um, but again, just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that both awards uh, presentations will be in this McHenry Lodge. That's also where the dining is, the opening ceremony, the athlete dance, all of that good stuff here. So... We've talked about the other things, the control center and the barns room over in the hotel portion of the resort. Okay. Yeah. Actually, while you're there, uh, just so folks know that whispers room that we're talking about is the quieter room during the social. It's right about, yeah, right about where Steve is pointing there and the windows are glass. So you can be standing in the McHenry Lodge. We picked it specifically with a coach in mind. You can be standing in the McHenry Lodge, watching your athletes in the dance, and just turn your head and you can see your athletes in the quiet room. So it should be for those who need to utilize that space, um, it should make the, the supervision of your group um, significantly easier than it might otherwise be. Thank you, Mike. And I think this is where I do hand it over to yep. you. So again, um, we're super excited to be there uh, at WISP. They are super excited to have us. Uh, and um, uh, the one thing I would say is, again, this is a new venue, first time uh, in uh, since 2010 that we've been at WISP. Um, we're really excited about the layout there. I'm not sure if it came across, but for the first time, probably since maybe ever, um, the venues are going to be close enough that a spectator, a family member, or HOD, whatever, I mean, the coaches are going to be engaged but you could stand on the patio outside the McHenry Lodge and see all the competition and then just walk right inside and see the awards. It's, it's just great for getting the, the whole picture of everything all at once. We're, we're just super excited and WISP has been um, very helpful in kind of thinking through scenarios and um, contingencies, particularly for snowshoeing. Uh, given uh, the impact on um, weather uh, and such right now, it looks and they are extremely confident, even knowing conditions that are coming up uh, with it being warmer and such, um, that uh, they will have plenty of snow to cover um, uh, the space that we need. Uh, and we have a plan B and a plan C, and I think sort of a plan D, uh, but it's unlikely we're going to have to go past, past plan A. So. Um, but because of that, we want to be sure that we have as much communication as we can. Um, I would also say, though, that it's a bit of a fluid situation uh, with a lot of the aspects of the games as being the first time that we've been back there uh, and kind of, you know, stuff will change. And so we want to be sure that we have these heads of delegation meetings each evening while we're there uh, to answer any questions, provide updates and information. Of course, we'll also use the uh, coach resource page to post um, results, post notices, post whatever that everybody can get to. Um, uh, we'll post the event guide there as well when it's ready, uh, no later than Monday um, and such. But so we'll have these meetings. It's, they're going to be in the Pine Room, which is on the second floor of the tower, uh, right above where the control center is, right off the main lobby. Um, and uh, those are the uh, estimated times that will go by. We want to keep them brief, but at the same time, we want to be able to answer as many questions as you might have. So, um, cool. Uh, then for registration uh, on site, um, it'll take place actually in the control center, which is in the Barnes room. Um, those of you who are familiar or maybe familiar with the WISP Hotel, the Barnes room uh, is down the hallway where they have the conference rooms on the first floor. Um, uh, second room on the left, but you'll see it. There's signs. There's plenty of stuff there. Um, uh, but we'll be doing there uh, right off the lobby. It'll be open as early as 10 uh, and go till 3. I will tell you right now, keys will not be available or ready at 10. 
Uh, so um, just be um, not, uh, just know that uh, they they have to essentially turn the entire hotel. Um, uh, and other, other than, I guess, some of the rooms that some of our folks will be in uh, on Friday and or Saturday night. Um, so um, uh, we'll be uh, getting the, the keys out as and Jane will be focusing on that uh, as quickly as we can. Um, so we are expecting to have to make this as functional as possible for you guys when you show up. There'll be three packets uh, and uh, up to three packets. Uh, one specifically for alpine skiing, one specifically for snowshoeing, and one uh, for the overall delegation. The ones for the sports will have your bib numbers, uh, lift and rentals if that's necessary for uh, what for um, your sport. Uh, anything else that's needed for time trials, uh, so you can get um, you can essentially as a head of delegation can hand that off to your head coach, and um, uh, he or she can then uh, proceed. And then the overall delegation will have all your credentials, which you really don't need for um, uh, the time trials because the bibs will serve that purpose. Um, uh, and anything else that'll be there for the heads of delegation I will be in that overall. You as a head of delegation can pick up all three. If you would prefer to have your head coach pick uh, up the ones for their specific sport, um, let me know and we're happy to do that. Uh, and uh, just so that we know what to expect. So. Um, and again, uh, the, the, that next bib's redundant. So, uh, and then also at that point, um, you can report any scratches. Again, it'll be after the deadline for any kind of uh, reduction in your registration fees, but um, uh, we'll need to know that for any um, divisioning and such going forward. Um, and again, there's a reminder about noon on Monday for any scratches that you know of to not be charged for those. Um, and to do that, just if you could, if you have those scratches, if you could send it both to me and to the appropriate sport director, uh, that would be helpful. Um, yes, we we do talk to each other, but that just speeds it up a little bit there. Okay, Steve. Uh, then continuing, I'm not going to go through all this because um, uh, we've talked through it, but this is just a reminder about the um, the fees. Uh, those folks who are staying on site and are within the three to one ratio is 195. That'll get charged to your area. If they're staying off site, it'll be 120. They get everything except for uh, lodging. Uh, and then because we were able to open up housing, because we turned out that we did have additional uh, rooms that we did not need, uh, we heard from several folks about uh, adding some other some additional folks in. And any of those additional folks above the three to one ratio will be at 260. So, and, uh, but again, you all should know that. Um, so uh, that, the check-in here, the, the Sunday 10 to three is the registration. We also strongly request uh, that everyone pop in uh, on Monday morning and Tuesday morning, uh, just check in around eight o'clock. We will do, uh, for those of you, again, who have been to winter games or to summer games, for that matter, you know that we, um, uh, for um, some of the sports, uh, and we do it for both alpine and snowshoeing here, uh, we create uh, what we call the batch backs or the labels that tell you um, for each athlete or each competitor, uh, um, the events that they're in, what time, so on down the line. Um, to get to that, we got to do all the divisioning and all the scheduling and stuff. It is possible, but not highly likely, we'll have those done Sunday night. Uh, so um, we're if we do, we'll let folks know, and we'll certainly post the information on the um, uh, on the web on the uh, um, coach resource page. Um, but uh, we'll have hard copies, uh, both of the labels as well as your Bucci report, which has stuff in time sequence, uh, as well as some other things. Um, that we'll, uh, we'll have those hard copies available for you no later than 8 o'clock on Monday or Tuesday, uh, unless not going wood, <laughs> there's any tech issues, but we anticipate that being um, fine. Uh, and then just parking, that's just a straightforward thing of just public parking. We're not paying anybody's parking ticket. If anybody in your delegation or outside of your delegation is not parked in a legal, legitimate parking spot, we're not covering that. Um, housing information. Um, so again, the most, much of this Jane's dealing with all the rooming. Uh, I think she's getting almost all of it down, uh, right now. I know she's handed something, some stuff off to the hotel, um, medical rooms. We'll send that out to you, uh, but there will be a designated medical room, 
Um, thank you to Norma uh, Bard and also uh, here with us, Dottie Turner, who are uh, going to um, help us in uh, providing medical coverage. We'll also have um, Alec Travers, uh, who many of you know as well. Uh, he's actually on the Alpine team, but he uh, can be available should we need uh, for medical. Um, but uh, we're uh, we're very happy and pleased that folks can would, are doing that for us. Uh, as a reminder, this was mentioned at the last meeting as well. Um, because of the size of our event and staffing challenges, uh, the hotel will not be able to um, uh, clean all the rooms uh, on a daily basis. So um, plan accordingly. Uh, we'll, we'll remind folks also at the athlete and family session next week, but you know, not to leave your towels on the floor or whatever. Uh, if you do need additional towels, or somebody does need additional towels, they can be gotten at the front desk, not the control center. Uh, so go to the front desk uh, for that. Uh, also, the keys, which um, uh, folks haven't stayed in a hotel recently, uh, or might be new for some of your delegation members, they're they're not even swipe. They're actually the the kind that you tap uh, on the um, on the door like a credit card, like you can do that where you pay that. Um, so there is no swipe spot, but it's just a tap uh, on the door. Um, in addition, each room has a, a ski locker assigned to it. Uh, and there is an actual physical key that comes with the ski lockers. I believe all of the ski lockers are located in the, or right off the hallway that connects the tower portion of the hotel and the end portion of the hotel. There's sort of a side hallway there that has, I believe, all of the, um, the ski lockers there. Please, please, please have skis stored there, probably poles too, for two reasons. One, less likely to cause damage to a room or anything else. Secondly, if any of you have been there before, trying to get out in the morning <laughs> is, is a challenge with everybody in the hallway and people trying to navigate with skis as well as they're getting out of their room just makes for um, quite a bit of a mess. Uh, and there's not much we can do in terms of uh, that with the uh, the physical space we've got. But um, having those skis stored in their in their um, ski locker is uh, helpful for all folks. Um, it is OK to wear your ski boots into your room, so so you can you don't have to, to deal with that. Uh, and then lastly, with that, if um, the ski locker key is lost or not returned, there is a $75 fee that's going to get charged to your area. That, similar to at Towson, if um, uh, for, well, I think we're still using physical keys there, or at least for some of the rooms. Um, for overnight emergencies, uh, you can call me or Steve. We'll both be there at, that, at the hotel. And again, we'll have the medical information. Uh, really, we'll give you a room number for medical work. Although Dottie, I'm sure, would love or will be fine with us giving out her cell phone. We actually want you to call the room. She'll also be on a radio, as will Norma uh, and all uh, and such. And then also, we're talking true emergencies. Uh, I need more towels or I'm lonely. That's not an emergency. <laughs> well, at least not one that we're going to respond to. There's other ways you can address those issues um, uh, and such. Uh, for food services, yep, this is still me. Um, so all meals for credentialed delegation members are going to be in the McHenry house. And we mentioned about meal shifts for Sunday evening. Um, the social and dances, again, I think Steve sort of touched on this already anyway, but this is just a reminder. We need to um, flip part of the room. So um, uh, we may need some assistance with that, but uh, hopefully that's not going to be um, uh, much of a challenge there. Um, and again, just be courteous and all. Uh, families have the option um, uh, or don't have the option to eat with delegations. Only the delegation members will be there. Um, there are several, I think Steve will touch on it later, but there are several places to get something to eat, both on site there at WISP, as well as um, there is a whole slew of restaurants up and down uh, 219, which is the, the main strip there. Um, right there at WISP itself, uh, DC's restaurant, which is uh, right off of the McHenry Lodge, is open. And then also, I, I think it's the Alpine Lodge is what they call it. It's basically a cafeteria, literally right there in uh, the McHenry Lodge. Those are both expected to be open uh, while we're there. Uh, and uh, uh, you can take advantage of that, should you wish. Um, 
and uh, you will need your credential for your meal. Um, and then just as a note, I know we've said this before, but lunch on Sunday is not included in the meals. Um, so uh, that's on your own. Um, but again, there are numerous options. Also, not many folks will probably be over there. Maybe the Glide Super Glide folks, but over in the Yurt Village, which we are not using now, they also have uh, a uh, a dining a dining yurt, I guess it is, uh, that's available too. So, yeah, and just to to reiterate and and maybe um, add on to what Mike was saying in regards to family members or general spectators. Those general public areas, especially within the McHenry Lodge, will, will be able to utilize those places to get food. However, in that main seating area, only credentialed members will be able to sit in those sections. So WISP is directing anybody without a credential to other locations. So I just want to make that clear that even though there are options to purchase food within the McHenry Lodge through the cafeteria line or whatever, that there is separate seating. Mm -hmm. um, that WISP personnel will direct family members who don't have a credential and the general public to go to so that it doesn't impact on um, the capacity for our registered delegation members. Right. And and for during the lunch time, the uh, on Monday and Tuesday, the intention there is to have them go right into Whispers, which is if you're going through the cafeteria or the Alpine, whatever it's called, um, it's literally as you're walking out of it, uh, it's the whispers is right in front of you and to have that open, it seats about 75 people uh, and they don't have much of a public crowd on a Monday or a Tuesday. So cool. Uh, rental forms, is that still me? Yep. Um, so uh, all ski rentals are require, require the rental form. Uh, that's going to be sent out to coaches by tomorrow. Um, unless it's already gone out, I'm not sure. Um, uh, just keep in mind, if you have any minors in your group, uh, the parent or guardian will need to sign for the minor. So it may be something you want to take care of ahead of time. Uh, any athlete uh, who is his or her own guardian, of course, can sign for themselves, uh, which is almost all athletes who are adults um, over the age of 18 or, 18 or over. Um, not all, but almost all. So um, just be sure you have that taken care of. Uh, and then again, to talk about the skis um, location. Uh, and then it would be helpful to label the ski equipment. Um, uh, that's more not so much once they're in your ski locker, although it could be with multiple folks in a room, uh, but also um, when they're out on the racks outside, uh, it's helpful to have them labeled as well. Uh, and in case I don't think anybody answered it, Rachel, I did see your question. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, uh, you will when you when whoever's renting skis, I know a lot of folks are bringing their own. If you're renting skis, you'll rent them and you'll keep them for the duration from Sunday through Tuesday, returning them on Tuesday. Uh, unlike the um, the RFID ski lift uh, cards where you'll have a separate one for Sunday, you don't turn your skis back in. Uh, and uh, so, Rachel, uh, HODs, the intention, yes, is to be given all the locker keys at the time of check in. Uh, likely only the locker keys for your Alpine personnel. So if you have all snowshoeing folks in one room, uh, we're likely not going to give you that because that's just something else for somebody to lose. So, but yes, that the intention is to give that uh, when we give all the room keys out. All right. Thank you. Yep. And I think with that, uh, it is back to Mr. Bennett. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Um, so as we talked about in the um, overall general schedule, the welcome back um session with the uh, Garrett County Chamber of Commerce, be there in the McHenry Lodge. Um, that's for certain members of their um, the chamber and other uh, leaders in the community will be attending that. Um, there, oh, it's not a closed session, if you will. So um, they're having a welcome on the actual opening ceremony stage. So um, those of you who are, are around that area, um, you can feel free to attend. Um, they're basically doing a welcome session. Go ahead, Mike. Steve, if I can just add a little short, we really do encourage all delegation members to come to this, unless you're part of the parade. Um, the the folks with the uh, Garrett County Chamber, as well as all of Garrett County, well, as far as we can tell, all of Garrett County, uh, is thrilled to have us back. Uh, it will be uh, quick. Um, uh, they'll have some refreshments as well. Uh, but please do try to get everybody uh, in for that, um, because as soon as that's over, 
uh, we're going right into opening ceremonies. Recognize that the folks that are doing are part of the parade for your delegation won't be able to partake in that. But please do, please get your folks there. Uh, it's really meaningful for uh, for the um, for Special Olympics and for Garrett County. So thank you. Yep, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be good, and there there was, there's a special little treat, if you will, um, that is planned for those who are down in that area during that uh, welcome back and uh, session with the chamber and others from the community. Um, so again, uh, opening ceremony we talked about that's on Sunday evening at seven thirty to about nine, give or take, depending on how long winded some of the speakers may be, or or any delays that may occur. Um, I think Steve, you have uh, Jim duty <laughs> yes Watch I've, jim. Got, I've got the the unplug the mic uh with jim schmutz if, if he goes too long so um and we joke with him about it he jokes about himself with that as well so um you're trying to get me in trouble and say well you know what steve said he knows already um so those of you who have submitted uh the representatives in the, in the parade or who you intend to have that uh those individuals do that i appreciate it I have not checked emails since about 3.30 today. Um, so I know there was about five or six delegations who I have not heard from. Um, so those were due again today. So if you haven't submitted those names, please do so today. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of a, a grace, grace period, if you will. Um, and we did say only two individuals, please. I know in some cases, some counties did. Um, two athletes or an athlete and a partner and a coach, you know, we're not going to kick the third person out. Um, we'll, we'll let that slide. So, uh, but again, if you did not get a response from me via email that you submitted, I'm saying, thanks, I got it. That means I haven't seen it yet. So either reach back out to me or whatever. I tried to respond and check everything um, up till 3.30 today. So again, thanks to those who did submit those. I mean, again, that's that's my email address there. Send them straight to me. And just to clarify for folks, we probably should have put this on the slide. The reason or one of the reasons we try to get that information for here and for uh, for fall sports and for summer games as well, try to get that early is we will be having athletes uh, who will be the MCs. I know Elena Camacho is one and I forget who the other individual is. Ray, like Miller. Ray Miller. Ray Miller. OK, so they're going to be the MCs and we get them copies of the script ahead of time. Uh, and particularly given different names and such, uh, they, they really take it seriously and they want to rehearse it and changing stuff at the last minute uh, that doesn't have to be changed at the last minute just can add to potential confusion and challenges. So let's support our athletes and uh, who are doing uh, and doing the emceeing and, and get that information in so we can uh, make them or help them be as successful as they possibly can be. So yeah. thanks. Thank you, Mike. Um, and then um, we know at times we we try to avoid it at all costs, but we know it happens at times. If someone um, you need to make a change at the last minute, we can scratch a name and put another name in there. But the important thing is submit them now, as Mike mentioned. The second important piece to this is have them report to the whispers room um, during uh, by seven o'clock um, so that the banners can be handed out we can confirm that they're the people who have been submitted in the script if there's any changes etc so we really need those representatives to report by seven otherwise the delegations will still be represented in the script but there won't be anybody walking in for the parade if you will portion of the opening ceremony so again um, just work with your folks make sure they're in place uh, we want everyone who wants to be recognized for whatever reason that you guys have determined um, we want to make that happen so we'll work with you as best to our abilities but please work with us on these parameters <clears throat> the other thing i'll say is um i know it was pretty bad at wis or at whitetail at sometimes um especially being outside with some wind and everything sometimes it was hard to hear the speaker at the opening ceremony but even being indoors um there's a lot of good information people have worked hard on the script uh, the athletes, uh, you know, they've been practicing, et cetera. So we want to be respectful to all those around us. Um, so please kind of remind people to not have side conversations and that kind of stuff during the opening ceremony. Be respectful to those who are trying to um, enjoy and pay attention and, and listen to uh, the words being stated. Um, special events, uh, 
opening ceremony. I think we've hit that enough, so I'm going to move on. Uh, the theme of the dance, as I said, Academy Awards. Uh, we talked about the award ceremonies, both in the in the uh, McHenry Lodge. Again, as Mike indicated, um, really good uh, visual for the competition venues and ease of visualization uh, to go out to see both of the competition venues. Similarly, um, great that everyone can be in there uh, to see all the award ceremonies for both sports as well. Makes it great for you guys as HODs, uh, makes it good for a lot of the management team, et cetera, who is either stuck at one place or the other and hasn't been able to see uh, their friends and, and fellows um, at uh, the different sports throughout winter games in the past. So um, we talked about whispers during the dance um, in the quieter room. One of the things we didn't mention earlier, but I know we mentioned previously in, a, in other webinars, is the swimming pool um, will not be available to anyone associated with Special Olympics um, during the winter games. There's no lifeguards, et cetera. So it's um, something that we have put off limits to um, anyone in Special Olympics. So please relay that message along as well. <clears throat> um, the awards information, we talked about that enough. Um, the big thing there is make sure that there is someone from your delegations, whether it's a coach, one of your sport volunteers, yourselves, whatever. Make sure that, um, especially with Alpine, when the coaches are being utilized as escorts, et cetera, that there is someone to meet the athletes once they um, get their award presentation and then exit the, the award stand um, to go off either to their next event or in the day and go get some rest, whatever. Uh, but really important that there's someone from the delegation to meet those after, their, uh, after they've received their awards. Um, there will be a little separate uh, spectator or picture taking area. We're going to block off the award stands with some rope and stanchion. So again, just uh, make sure that uh, those walkways um, in that blocked off section uh, that's for the athletes and the presenters to get to and from the award stands. Um, the uh, As available and as we work through technology and everything, we're hoping to be able to post the results on the coaches resource page throughout the event. But, um, you know, absolutely no promises. We will definitely have it on the coaches resource page within a day or two after Winter Games is concluded. But I know uh, Mike's expertise, not mine, is um, getting the reports from GMS and posting them as we can uh, throughout the day, um, or at least at the end of each day, given um, mm -hmm. the time available. That, that said, we have had a pretty good track record of getting them up actually within 10 minutes of the end of that of a given event. So um, uh, looking forward to that. So nice little challenge. Very good. Um, escort's not going to go into this a lot. This is basically more so for the Alpine coaches, and this is what we have been doing in the past um, at Whitetail. It's basically um, just talking about the coaches and their role as escorts to assist um, athletes and partners, et cetera, getting to and from the um, lifts to the start of the race and then the final staging and get to the gates and then uh, meeting them at the bottom. Um, to either take them up, back up for another run or to help them get to the awards areas um, during Monday and Tuesday's final races. Um, so again, this will be communicated and gone over again um, with the Alpine coaches. Um, so nothing for you as HODs to really take from this other than check with the Alpine coaches and make sure they've got it covered as far as the athletes competing and that they're aware that they will be assisting um, escorting athletes to and from the, the lifts and the awards. Um, again, this is just a, another piece of that. Um, the big thing here that we emphasize is that the coaches can talk to the athletes or, or uh, partners while taking them back and forth from the staging area and on the lift. But once the competitors enter um, the race course or the starting gate, or that final staging area, that's when the coaching has to has to be done. You know, you've worked with the athletes up to that point. Um, it's their time to shine. Uh, we don't want to ever disqualify anybody from um, coaching infractions and giving the cues. So um, Alpine coaches and snowshoeing coaches both um, really just cheer. Go, good job. Keep it up. Good work. That kind of stuff. Uh, any kind of technical 
advice or anything like that and won't get into too much but you get the drift you know it uh, there's policies in place and procedures in place that um, each sport committee and officials know how to address those we never want to disqualify anybody for that but it's really important to let the family members know this as well um, so it's not just a disqualification because of a coach it can be any anybody given instruction so really just re-emphasize that to everyone come in as spectators or whatever else cheer don't give instruction you know that's the athletes have been trained this is their time to show what they've they've learned and um, have success on the on the courses <clears throat> so again this is just a reiteration of that um, not want to speak too much more about that um, but just really emphasize that to everyone same kind of thing here the only thing I'll, I'll say here is it gives you some examples, you know, go, John, hooray, good job. That's that's good stuff. Put your skis downhill. It'll be easier to get up, you know, back up a little bit, take bigger steps, you, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, we've also seen, I think I mentioned this to you guys last time, um, the credence of, of cheers could also be um, a coaching where go, go every time you say go that athlete turns and gets to another gate C officials are aware of that uh so we just don't want to do that and i know you guys don't so um i think enough said on that <clears throat> so here's the consequences like i talked about the officials the management teams for each of the sports um you know who did the coaching um the infractions or whatever um and again it can come from anyone um, so it could be a, a partner, it could be a family member, it could be a coach, it could be anyone that that's overstepping their bounds as, as far as um, helping athletes on the course. So first offense, um, they'll be required to leave the course, okay, for the duration of the event. Second offense, they could be ejected from the Winter Games. So again, nobody wants this to happen. We look for you guys to help us uh, relay this message out to everyone so that we don't um, have these types of, of situations. So. Um, just really, and I don't think we've really had much infraction, but um, I've seen it at World Games and USA Games and things of that nature, and I think we're pretty good here, but it's, it always helps to reemphasize that. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm still going here. Um, so um, this is just more reiteration. I mean, it, I don't want to understress it, but you get the point no coaching we don't want to dq for those reasons so uh, with that being said we talked about the family hospitality um and that's expected to be in the morris room um, which is located right there on west property and the tentative hours there is that monday from 10 to about 3 30 give or take um again the big thing there is there are going to be some limited refreshments and things of that nature um, in the past, we have had um, families bringing um, athletes and partners, and then that uh, what happens is then they get the refreshments and things of that nature, and there's not any left for those family members who come later in the day. So we really want to limit that to pretty much the non-registered uh, family members, but it can be some of you who are uh, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles who serve as an HOD or a coach or whatever, but we really want to limit that to um, those family members so that uh, they get the benefit of the hospitality area. As we said, there might be merchandise in there, but we'll also have merchandise during the dance as well on Monday evening. So family meals, we talked about this. Um, I don't think there's any, any need to reiterate this, um, but again, non registered delegate or non-registered family members uh will not be provided meals from special mix maryland they're on their own mike indicated some of the areas earlier in the presentation um, and we also talked about the seating limitations where they can go as well um there on this on the the move of the snowshoeing course uh just want to prepare for a little bit of narrowness and limitations on spectators um as mike indicated we we're out there wisp has said we've got the snow we'll make this happen 
but we were unable to see exactly how that course will be set up. So as he indicated earlier, we have a plan A, B, C, D, E, maybe even F and G, but we just want to make sure that that you are prepared for it to be limited seating or limited areas um, to view the course around the actual course. There'll be areas where you can see the competition, no question, but up and close and personal to the to the event or to the finish line or whatever may be limited given the, the parameters of the space we're using and, um, and the snow capabilities. So just want to have people prepared for that. <laughs> um, we are looking at um, having a few chairs for the, the competitors and the, and the pre-staging area and things of that nature. Um, sorry. Um, but we also want spectators to be able to um, bring their own chairs. So given the fact that there will be limited access out on the course, or we, we are prepared for that, but if you want to bring your own chairs, we highly recommend that so that uh, given if it's allowable and if we're available to get you down really near the course that you have that capability and option. Talk about this at every event, attire and hydration. Keep athletes hydrated. If they're starting to get dehydrated, you've waited too long. Um, keep the fluids pumping. You know, it's going to be cold, but water, you know, keep pumping that water. Um, and again, be prepared. We don't know what the weather is going to be. I heard, sorry, um, it's my dad calling. I'll get him in a minute. Um, that uh, with the weather and everything, you never know what's going to be there. So um, layer up, be prepared for rain, be prepared for the cold. Um, you can always take layers off. You can't always put layers on. So um, as we talk about with every event, you never know what we're going to get. I did hear that we're, they're expecting, or at least Baltimore's expecting snow, I think, next Friday. So hopefully the uh, western part of the state is going to get that before it hits us. Long Range Forecast has uh, snow up there uh, for the several days leading into our winter games, too. So, so that, that that's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, additional information. Again, Mike talked about medical and overnight, et cetera. Um, especially for Alpine on the hill while you're skiing, the ski patrol at WISP will be um, the main point of contact there. Anything else that happens, you know, within the McHenry Lodge, snowshoeing venue, overnight in the hotel, whatever, uh, we'll make that information available to you and we will give you Dottie Turner's number. <laughs> so... Uh, with that being said, here are uh, reminders of the upcoming webinars. As we talked about with the uh, two sports, we have the Alpine Coaches Pre-Comp Webinar Monday the 20th at 6.30 and on Thursday the 23rd, the Snowshoeing Pre-Comp Webinar. Then we've added again like we did when we had coming back from COVID or leading into COVID and that kind of stuff with families and athletes. Thought it was important to also give them another webinar Um to be prepared for a new venue and a change that I uh, haven't been back to a WISP in I think what 10 or 10 or so years. So um, we thought it was just good to give them similar information as we're giving you just to give them an, a parameter, an idea of what to expect. So a few other things here, um, as always, we look for evaluations and feedback um, from not only you as heads of delegation, but coaches, athletes, partners, family members, anyone attending the event. Um, and this is the link. And, you know, it's going to be closing on the 21st of March. But really, as I always say, it's not just what you think we can improve upon. It's what you liked. We want to hear what you liked so that we keep it. We want to hear what you think we can improve upon so that we can look to make those improvements. Um, the other thing I'll also mention is, is when there's something that uh, you think we need to change or you didn't like or we need to improve upon, if you have any suggestions on how we can do that. Uh, please include that in there as well. Um, I think we've got really good people on our management teams and here at the state office, but we don't always have all the best ideas. Um, so, you know, as I said earlier, collectively, we're all here to make it the best experience for the athletes and everyone who attends the events. So we look for your feedback and suggestions as well. <clears throat> we also have the link here listed for the Winter Games portion of the um, coaches resource page on our main website. Um, just an ease for you to, if you don't know how to navigate or you haven't been to the website, you know, really check it out. 
Um, and then within the winter games on this link, you can go down and see the different portions of that. Um, there's a snowshoeing portion, an alpine portion, and then a lot of general information. Um, as we always do as well, uh, please ask everyone, not just at the during the meals, but throughout the day, um, if you see someone drop something, say, hey, you dropped something. Let's pick that up. Let's keep WISP clean. Let's keep our areas clean so that, um, you know, it's, it's lessons, it's life lessons as well. But it's also the respect that we want as an organization from the outside community and every facility and vendors that we utilize that Special Olympics um, personnel respect our property and look at them picking up um, their own trash. They're, they're looking after our property. Um, similarly, uh, you'll see the volunteers in their winter hats with their name tags, et cetera. You know, they're giving up their time as I'm sure you guys all deal with volunteers at your county level and your area levels. Um, means a lot just to have a simple thank you. So don't underestimate walking up to a volunteer, walking up to an official, walking up uh, to a games management team member and saying, hey, thank you for being here. Thanks for the support. And as well, WISP staff. So um, just some reminders there. We want the great reputation and continue our reputation uh, with our volunteer groups, our facilities, and everybody else that uh, we thank them and we respect them. If you have any questions related to the games, uh, you can call Dottie Turner. Uh, we'll give her name and number out again. Um, but here's the main contacts. Uh, general overall questions, uh, you can come to me, um, Elizabeth Kramer. Um, we also put Melissa Anger here for Alpine Skiing. Um, as I think we mentioned earlier that Elizabeth is going on her honeymoon uh, during winter games. So that has been approved. Um, and she is sad to be missing uh, the event. She's had a great time at the on snow training with Alpine and all the planning leading up to this. So she's kind of bummed out that she's not going to see there or not going to be there to see it all the way through. But Melissa Anger will be stepping in to at least field your calls or questions and then direct those to someone from the Alpine uh, team to get an get those questions answered. Um, and Ryan Kelchner will remain as a snowshoeing contact. And anything I can't answer, I'll pass along to Mike, Mike or, or Dottie. <laughs> so with that, we talked about thanking the volunteers, thanking WISP, thanking the management team. We also want to thank you as heads of delegation. We know there's a lot of responsibilities on your shoulders. Uh, we're here to help you. Um, so thank you for doing what you do to get your county and area levels and programs, your athletes, your coaches and everything um, in the right mindset, uh, the training aspects and everything you do to support your entire delegation. So with that, um, Mike, I have not yeah. been checking the chat. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any uh, questions, at least not in the queue that I can see uh, that we haven't already addressed. Um, so uh, I think uh, I do see Larry that you've unmuted. Do you have a question or? Uh, very quickly, two two things. First of all, I will get you or Steve the uh, names of two people tomorrow. And the second one was I uh, talked to you about putting the numbers on our pennies, cutting them off of the paper and putting them on the pennies, which are easier to get over the jackets. Is um, that okay? Uh, <laughs> Uh, I need to kind of hold on that. So we, uh, we're we working on getting our bibs in and we may have a plan B for all of that anyway, uh, since uh, locating the bibs. So um, if your folks at a minimum, your folks are welcome to wear uh, the bibs that you have and put our bibs over top of them. The cutting of them uh, may or may not be a problem. So um, I do remember talking to you about that, though. But uh, yeah, we had a little curve ball thrown to us earlier today. So we may have to be making a shift on that entirely. So for now, uh, I mean, bring them. But um, uh, we may or may not be able to have you do that. OK. Yeah. Whatever. What happens? Yeah, part of it has to do also with the visibility for um, for the officials and such as they're going, but uh, it may be they have to shift 100% to everybody doing that anyway. So, um, yeah, but 
So, okay. Uh, any other questions that anybody might have? Um, and I should say we, we recognize it's after seven and anyone who um, does need to drop off, um, you know, please feel free to do so. Uh, but if anybody does have any remaining questions, we're happy to stay on for a little bit longer uh, to try to address them. Take care. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. I, I don't see any hands or any questions. And Dottie, if Anybody? you want to call me later to say don't give out your number, I'm not going to take your call. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. Well, uh, then thank you much, uh, Sharon and uh, Bob and Dottie and uh, Michelle. We look forward to, I think you're the only ones left on, we look forward to seeing you in a, a little over a week. And uh, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good deal. Thanks, Thank everyone. you, guys. Okay. Have a good night. Bye-bye.